Welcome to Tick Insight, where we show you how to make your workspace work. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at using Citrix SD-WAN to optimize delivery of Citrix HDX traffic using the single port multi-stream ICA auto QoS feature. Here in our endpoint, we're logged into our Citrix workspace, and we'll go ahead and launch a virtual desktop. Once we're in our session, we'll start playing a video, and based on WAN characteristics, we'll see that we have acceptable quality video and audio. But as we resize the playback window, we'll notice some impact to that quality based on the interactive mouse traffic. Now if we navigate to a virtual directory located in the data center, we'll select a large file to copy to a local directory on our endpoint here in our branch office. As we start the copy, we'll notice that there's an impact on the network bandwidth. And that as the bandwidth usage ramps up, we'll notice that that affects the video quality and audio quality. And if we pause it here, we'll see that the sunset turns into grainy blocks of pink. Often enterprise intranet architectures without SD-WAN route corporate data traffic from remote branches over an MPLS network to a central data center and backhaul internet traffic through it for inspection. This can lead to poor user experience at the branches when there are WAN outages or congestion. Citrix SD-WAN creates secure virtual tunnels across all available paths between SD-WAN instances, such as MPLS, internet, or mobile LTE networks. They measure path characteristics and communicate regarding their view of the network in real time. Then they identify traffic flows and route them on a per packet basis across the optimal path with knowledge of the quality each can offer and reassemble flows for delivery at their destination, providing the best possible application user experience. Now if we focus on delivery of virtual apps and desktop sessions over the HDX protocol, we see that by default it will be identified by Citrix SD-WAN and prioritized over available paths, but it's treated as a single protocol service. Yet we know that the HDX payload traffic is broken down into ICA channels, which may be classified into four classes of service. Class 0, shown by the solid black line, is for real-time traffic or very high priority channels, such as voice delivery, which needs to be expedited. Class 1, shown by the elongated dashed blue lines, is for interactive traffic or high priority channels, such as graphics or video, which needs to be delivered with low loss. Class 2, shown by the dashed green lines, is for bulk traffic or medium priority channels such as drive mapping or file transfers which should be delivered with low latency. And Class 3, shown by the dotted orange lines, is for background traffic or low priority channels such as printing which may be queued and delivered as the network capacity is available. Citrix provides several ways to prioritize these individual traffic classes. The first requires configuration on the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops Delivery Controller to send each of the four different classes using four different transport ports. It also requires configuration on the SD-WAN controllers and may require configuration on internet routers and firewalls. The second also requires configuration on the delivery controller to send each of the four different classes with different quality of service priority tags applied to the IP headers. It also requires configuration on SD-WAN controllers and configuration on internet routers and firewalls. Now with Citrix SD-WAN single port multi-stream iOS auto as feature, no configuration is required on the delivery controller, routers, or firewalls, and only a single checkbox needs to be selected to enable it in the SD-WAN environment globally. If we look closer at the flow, we see with multi-stream ICA multi-port, after required config changes, the controller will send real-time traffic on a specific transport port. The SD-WAN appliance will be configured to recognize traffic on that specific port, which will map to a specific priority queue and based on real-time quality of service conditions, SD-WAN may, for example, choose to route it over both the, MPL, the mobile LT network and internet interactive traffic over the MPLS network, bulk transfer traffic over the internet and MPLS network, and queue background traffic over the internet. With multi-stream ICA single port tagged, 
After required config changes, the controller will send real-time traffic with a specific priority tag. The STWIN appliance will be configured to recognize traffic with that specific tag, which will map to a specific priority queue, and similarly, based on real-time quality of service conditions, SD-WIN will route it accordingly, and then in a similar fashion, route interactive, bulk transfer, and background traffic using their respective QoS tags. With multi-stream ICA single port, with no configuration changes on the delivery controller or network equipment, the controller will send all traffic on port 1494 or 2598. Then the ASD WAN appliance will identify the class of service by inspecting an uncompressed virtual channel in the HTX stream called the NSAP channel. With this knowledge, it will break out real-time traffic and based on real-time quality of service conditions, it will route it accordingly and also break out interactive, bulk transfer, and background traffic and route it accordingly as well. Here in our master control node, or MCN, where we can configure and monitor all SD-WAN appliances centrally, we'll navigate to the Monitor tab. In the Connections section, we'll notice that we have a single ICA stream flow representing both file transfer and video traffic. Now if we navigate to the Configuration section, under Virtual WAN Configuration Editor, we'll notice that there's two sites. The first represents our primary data center. We'll see that there are two LAN interfaces, and the first has two ports bridged together and is configured with a subnet where the delivery controller is hosted. And we'll see, also notice that there are interfaces representing our WAN links. Then in the other site that represents our branch, we'll also see there's two ports bridged together with a subnet where the branch client is hosted. And likewise, we'll notice interfaces representing our WAN links. Now if we navigate to the Global Config section, we'll see that we have Deep Packet Inspection enabled. We'll go ahead and enable that for Citrix ICA applications. This will allow us to utilize our multi-stream single port auto QoS feature. Now we'll go ahead and save our, our configuration, and then we'll export it to our Change Management inbox. Now we can prepare to push our new configuration to our SD-WAN appliances. We'll begin by staging the appliances and we'll notice the transfer of the config package to each of the appliances. And then we'll go ahead and activate the stage configuration with the auto QoS feature enabled. And now we'll go ahead and return to our restarted virtual desktop session. Once in our session, we'll go ahead and restart the video, and again, we'll notice reasonably good quality for our bandwidth constrained branch client. And as we resize it, we'll notice some slight, we will not notice interruptions from the interactive mouse traffic. The quality remains fluid and the colors are consistent. Now if we navigate again to our virtual directory located in the data center, and copy a large file paste that into a local directory on our endpoint here in our branch office, we'll notice that the bandwidth can, starts to ramp up on the network. But, but last time we noticed that there was an impact to the quality. This time we see that the quality remains good both the, in both the audio and the video. Now if we go ahead and pause our file transfer and pause our video, We'll navigate back to our monitoring section. First, we can see under our connections that we do in fact have four different connections for our four classes of service. And then we can also see under our application QoS and our statistics section that as, as we restart our video, that we have a large increment of the quantity of packets and data. And that's a result of the class one priority traffic incrementing due to the video playback. Now if we return to our session and pause the video and resume the file transfer playback, we'll notice that the class two traffic increments significantly representing the file bulk transfer traffic. 
So we've seen with the SD-WAN single port multi-stream ICA QS feature, we can easily optimize our Citrix virtual app and desktop session traffic. 